Okay, let's take that deeper dive into Anthem Arc Genesis software and talk about a bunch of things that I've learned and how I've been using it in kind of a more powerful and customized way. So right off the bat, I'll say for sure, I have been having a really great time with the Anthem AVM70 processor, its settings, its capabilities, and the Arc software overall. Now I have encountered some bugs and I have encountered some limitations with the software and I've been posting an AVS forum and trying to get some support and help around that. But a lot of that's been around doing like really, really more complex things with it. Trying to do multiple measurements with different types of equipment as I have both the Arundel subs and the Harbottle sub and trying to, to do a multi-measurement or do multi-configs where I have different pieces of equipment and swapping them in and out. And I found a couple workflow er errors and omissions, I guess you could say, between the Genesis software and taking measurements and doing a calibration and then uploading it to the device. So I backed off on trying to do some of the more complex things, uh, but I've still been able to do a lot of customization and I found uh, some more uh, interesting learning points and, and such with the tools. So I think it's worth that, that kind of overall deep dive now that I've learned quite a bit more about the software. First thing I want to comment on, and I'm not specifically connected, I've got the software loaded here, and we're going to go through one of my saved configurations or some of my saved configurations. Not going to do anything live. I do have the other video where I kind of gave an overall like basic overview of going through start to finish for an ARC Anthem Arc Genesis uh, measurement. And I did the follow-up video that the correction video about the mic placements from the first video, I did learn better about moving the second and third mic positions kind of forward and down rather than being level with the listening position. So do look on the channel if you want for those two videos, uh, again, related to running the software to, to measure your, your audio and uh, doing it in the correct way with the microphone. This is kind of video number three where we'll actually take a look into some more detailed stuff. But one thing I do want to say off the bat is I really have enjoyed and made powerful use of the quick measure capability. That's the third option down here um, on the toolbar. You can basically set up the microphone, set up the software, really without any real setup, launch the software, and be able to dump into, into quick measure. It does a full audible sweep for the selected speaker. You can do a full audible sweep for the entire like frequency range that ARC measures. And, and it just sweeps over and over and over again. And it has some really neat capabilities to be able to do like a screenshot of the, of the response line. So if you're making tweaks, for example, like adjusting the PEQ directly in the Arundel subs, it, uh, you can make the PEQ tweaks with a, a base image of what was happening before and then see the real-time image of what was happening later. Maybe I'll actually do a dedicated video on that in using Quick Measure because, again, I've really found it to be a really cool and powerful piece of this software leading up to doing a full set of measurements and the full uh, Genesis uh, sweep. So, but in any case, let's open my Arundel config. This is the configuration that I'm running when I use the Arundel subs in the system and uh, in everything right now. And so what I want to do is kind of go back a little bit and show a couple of things. First of all, I have been doing a five position measurement. So if I, if I jump back here, I'm not going to come all the way back to configure measurement, but I am going to start with the measure your system. So you have the select a microphone, take measurements and review and remeasure just to show I have been doing five positions. This shows all of the different, um, all of the different speakers in all of the different positions. And if you, do you have an individual measurement in your broader measurement that you felt was wrong in some way? No, you can choose to turn that speaker on for the given positions, maybe just one position, maybe multiple positions, kind of, you know, what have you, and, and remeasure independently. There's a lot that goes into doing a five position measurement across umpteen speakers. It takes a little while. So if, if something was compromised and you wanted to remeasure, you have the ability to do that. Although I would be careful like doing a full sweep of measurements and then coming back some days later and, and remeasuring something independently because you know, you, unless you're remeasuring everything at the new position, you may not be able to get the microphone back into exactly the same spot. And so you could actually be compromising your overall results more than adding to them. But I think in one of the earlier videos I mentioned about like not having or not having found 
the ability to do like an independent speaker or, or whatnot remeasure. And I just wanted to highlight the fact that the software does in fact allow you to do that after all. Into the number three section here is really where I spent a lot more time and where a lot more of the power of what the software is capable of kind of comes into play. So there is a concept when you run the software between measurements and profiles, and they are not the same thing. You can have four measurements and you can have four profiles. But again, I just want to be clear because I, I might have muddied it in some of my earlier videos. They're not exactly the same thing. And here's the relationship. So when you go into adjust arc settings and you set up your profiles, which will be the actual individual configurations that are selectable in your receiver or in your preamp, notice here I can actually choose what measurement goes with which profile. So these four entries here, as I'm showing them, are the four profiles, and they can independently be mapped to a different measurement. So this is what I tried to do with the Arundels and the Harbato was make a measurement for the Ar with all of the regular speakers plus the Arundel subs, measurement A, and then make a measurement B with all the regular speakers in the Harbottle sub, and then make individual profiles that would be specific to the, to the separate subwoofers. And again, I just found that that what really wasn't working for me. It should work that way, but I think I tripped up some bugs and, and the results in the in such were not were not proper. So in, in any case, I have in this configuration one measurement, but I am using multiple profiles. And the reason I do that is because what I found that I've been doing in the software is leaving the first profile as as all default or or like the base. Uh, the base profile, the base configuration, using the Anthem curve as they define it. And then, and so I hear, I call this one here ARN base for that default profile. And then I have a second one called ARN mod where I make some tweaks that I've been kind of experimenting with to have the response and have the software run in ways that I find more, more pleasing and more tuned or a little bit more specific to my room. So I've only done that I've only done the two profiles, but again, you could do more. So here, profile three and profile four are disabled, but they could be enabled. They could be mapped to the same single measurement A that's in this configuration, and then I could rename them to be what I wanted them to be. The other thing you can do here, so the next tab is for each profile, notice it propagated the name. So I have Arn Base and Arn Mod uh, for Arn Doll Default and Arn Doll the, the modified modif modified one is I have all of my speakers selected. So everything is everything that I have in the room connected for this configuration is enabled for both of these. But this is where if you wanted to make a two channel configuration, you could turn speakers off. This is also where I encountered kind of one of the other, I, th I think, workflow bugs of the whole Anthem system, where what I tried to do was was have both of my anth but both of the Arundel subs running off of the subwoofer one output of the AVM70, and then put the Harbottle on subwoofer output two, take a full measurement, so measuring the two subs is one, and then the individual Harbottle sub, but in here, then I would try to make a profile that used subwoofer one, and a profile that used subwoofer two, which would allow me then to have everything connected at the same time, and just in software, be able to change in the AVM70, which sub effectively is active. But the workflow bug comes into play that if you only enable subwoofer two and not subwoofer one, and then you upload the profile in the AVM70, that profile reads one subwoofer in the config. But because it's reading one subwoofer, it actually outputs sound on subwoofer one, even though subwoofer two was configured in here. And so I think what they need to do actually is they need to have another option, another configuration option inside the AVM70 itself in the profile that if you set one subwoofer, you're able to select what actual output port will be, will be used or, or will have audio sent out of it. And that would solve the issue and give you the ability to do that kind of, of switching. So I need to fully report that to Anthem and I hope to see that because they could fix it very easily and, and add a whole lot more flexibility, particularly for those different subwoofer configurations kind of into the system. So here's the next the next thing where you, you might start to tweak a little bit, and I do tweak a little bit, is the speaker levels. So all of these trims are set as they are by the Anthem software. You can see each speaker left and right for, for each location and the subwoofers at the bottom 
have their own trimmed. It's calibrating basically to 75 decibels. And so here you can see what kind of responses, right, my, uh, my various speakers are giving. I'll go to those in, in a little bit as well before this video ends and take a look at some of them in particular in, in larger size to make it easier to see. But I don't do too much modification here. I have been, uh, on some of the subwoofer trims, I have been bumping them just a hair because I have these dips. What I've learned about my room is that you're using subwoofers at the front of the room and it's been regardless if it's been the Arundel or the Harbottle, whether the subwoofer's been in the middle, in the quarter point, or in the corner. I have these peaks. My, my room responds, was, responds with a peak in the 35 hertz range, and then it dips pretty fiercely in the 50 hertz range. And so definitely the room correction is bringing those peaks down and pulling those peaks up, but the overall volume level of the subwoofer needs to be high enough in order to, to, to pull the peaks down while kind of nullifying that null. But this also gets into some of the key things that I've been changing in the mod configuration, and we'll look at that in a second. But suffice to say, the speaker levels is where you adjust the potential trims on your speakers. Now, most of the cases, as I've been seeing, you would probably leave these alone. Let, let the trims be used, that Anthem measured and applied and such. But there are cases, such as if you're boosting things or, or trimming things in the room in a customized way that you may want to move, modify these potentially up or down. And so if I go to the ARN mod configuration, you can see that I do actually boost the subwoofers quite a bit more to prepare them for the adjustments to the target curve that I've been making um, and experimenting with in order to be able to let the Genesis software make a level response to that uh, specific modified curve. And that's all happens here in this adjust targets. And so if you noticed, maybe just to point it out at the top here, we have the select a profile to view. You can make your changes here, right? And if you had four profiles active, you'd have four of these blocks and you can configure them all independently. Again, the Arundel base, and let me, let me zoom this in, make it a little easier to see in the YouTube window. So this is the stock kind of anthem curve. It, it has the bass fairly level and then it trims off. It has the rest of the speakers come in with a little bit of a dip and a little bit of a roll off kind of as it goes forward. But I, I pretty consistently get these results for my room. Um, a room gain of three, a deep bass boost of zero, no tilt, a room gain center frequency of 200 Hertz, a deep bass boost of 50, which in this case is not actually applied, and a tilt start uh, around 100. But what I've been doing and is, is actually boosting this quite a bit. So I find that the default anthem curve to be just a little, to be weaker in the bass. It's not terrible, but I think I, I, I want more uh, out of my subwoofers. I want more out of my bass region. And so I've kind of built here a bit of a house curve that is more in line with like the Harman curves that you can more easily load, say like in the Dirac software where you have a higher base level and it trails off and it trails off and levels out as you get into the higher frequencies. So I'm by no means done with this and I'm still learning, I'm still tweaking, but I wanna call attention to a couple things that I've been doing in here that I think have been creating some, some preferable results for me in the room. And so the first thing I've been doing is just pumping this deep, ba this deep base boost all the way up, the full six dB of boost and also kind of moving the deep boost frequency over from 50 to 65. So as you can see, it creates much more of a top end, uh, top end bass signal here that up around 50 hertz really starts to kind of dive off until it meshes in with the rest of the speakers and continues forward from there. The, the Harman curves do that. They have, I think, like a 3 dB, a 6 dB, or even like a 10 dB bass boosted curve and it kind of tracks uh, similarly to this and so that's the bass side of things and, and actually then to have this to have the subwoofers be able to correct to this boosted curve they need a higher trim and so that's why I, i've added some db to the subwoofers and i and i do it in the the trims here in the genesis software the other thing that i've been doing and this is kind of a personal preference for me 
is I'm not much of a high frequency noise person, like nails on a chalkboard, screechy things. I've never liked loud, high frequency sound. It, it's, it's unnerving to me and, and, I, and I don't like it. And so I use Focal speakers, beryllium tweeters. They're known to be on the brighter side of things. And you can see for a lot of the speakers, they, they have boosts coming out in my room at, at upper frequencies. And so um, I added just a little, been, been tinkering with a little bit of a tilt. I have a one dB tilt here. So from kind of the integration range between the subs and the speakers and out to the high frequencies, it just brings that down a little bit, kind of edges it off. And the other thing that I've been doing is correcting all of the speakers, not the subwoofers, all of the speakers fully out to 20K. So Anthem is capable of doing that. By default, it will correct to five kilohertz. And I know a lot of people, I think, tend to not even correct more than like 500 hertz and such. But to me, I found I can, I can watch movies more pleasantly to me at a higher overall volume if I correct further out. And so, and again, my speakers have heights and they have peaks well over the target curve, even beyond that five kilohertz range. And I want to tame that. As you can see here, this, the, the left and right channels do, the center channel does, the surrounds do. It's pretty common for these focales, to, I guess, to do that, and particularly to do that in my room. And again, I really want to kind of tame that off, and I want that even response all the way out to those higher frequencies. And I found this to be more pleasing. And the other side effect is I found that it let me watch movies, again, at a higher overall volume before like I'm scrambling for the remote to turn something down because it's just, it's nails on a chalkboard to me, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't like it. So um, the other thing that I, I found that kind of corroborated with this is, I think it was on a recent Audioholics uh, YouTube show. I think it was specifically the one where they were announcing their partnership with the audio advice folks and talking about their room, like configuration wizard and such that they're launching is, um, I, I, I had long wondered about the fact, well, should you do something different in your room calibration, in your room EQ, whether you have an acoustically transparent screen or not? Does that affect maybe how you want to calibrate or how you want to have the calibration software run? And there's specifically a mention that, yeah, with an AT screen, you might want to have your room EQ go into the higher frequencies to fully help with, counteract, adjust, and, and so on, the, the impact of having that AT screen. And so I, it was nice to hear some folks that are, you know, certainly way more beyond my, my knowledge level corroborate something like that. So I've been running this again, my modded, uh, my modded house curve with all the speakers locations corrected up to 20 K. And again, quite honestly, listening, watching movies, using the room with and without these, these modifications, I am finding these modifications to be more pleasing to me. So it, it brings back more of that bass impact and impressiveness. It cuts down on a little bit of the higher frequency uh, shrillness. And, and so I'm not done. I'm still, again, I'm still kind of learning and, and see if there's anything else in here that I might, that I might want to continue tweaking. And I mean, if you, and if you're watching this, if you're an Anthem expert, you're an acoustics expert, Sound off and let me know. Like, it, or if you're using you're using these tools, you have certain modifications that you like, or you feel I'm doing something that's like probably, or you know, could be destroying my sound in some way, and I should do something else instead to achieve the results in a better manner. Sound off in the comments and and let me know. And again, I'm, I'm kind of learning as I go, and I'm learning a very much more so what I like, and I'm learning a lot about my room and what my room is really capable of, and how it works and its, its intricacies and its dynamics and the things it can do well and the things it can't do well. So I've definitely found some of those. So I welcome feedback and discussion. So after you have everything done here, I can click on this and here's the view, the review summary where you would be able to upload a given configuration to your device. Let me zoom this in a bit here. You can see these little more one by one. Um, and let's go to the modified the modified profile. So you can see how, how this is tracking. Pr pretty good overall, a little bit of squirreliness. The green is the corrected, uh, the adjusted line after the arc filters are calculated and applied based on all these settings. 
The red is, of course, the, the, measured, the measured signal with the level adjustments and the trims applied. And then the black is the target curve, including the adjustments that were made for the profile. So the left, the center, and the right, you know, are all tracking pretty good. A little bit of squirreliness down here around the crossover region, which I'm not necessarily a huge fan of, but really we're in like plus or minus a dB or two. And so I think that's okay. You can see where these, uh, these speakers, right, they're all peaking, these big peaks around 120 hertz or so. And then they kind of dip and they peak again. You know, they're all at the front of the room. They're all behind the screen. They're all getting a very similar type of uh, response curve. But in order to get this, um, Anthem, or Arc is trimming these speakers up pretty good. So they all have, you know, a, a plus several dB applied to them. And these are the Focal IW LCR6s, uh, and again, behind the screen. So the surround left, surround right, rear surround left, rear surround right, those are the IW6s. These tend to run a little flatter as measured, and they don't take as much, um, they don't have as much trim boost applied to them by the software. Quite nice curves on these, and I think that's a matter of them, you know, maybe not being behind the screen, uh, different placements in the room, being more open. I am, you know, I am running those speakers with the grills on, but I don't have the like material that goes in behind the grill which kind of adds another ba like baffle layer. But these are all pretty flat. I'm, I'm almost more impressed with the curves of the IW6s than the IW LCR6s, even though the IW LCR6s have, you know, it's a bigger speaker, it has more playback potential. And then the tops, height one through four. Again, th these, have, these have some of these dips up there in that 1K, 2K range, but otherwise they're, they're pretty flat. And again, I think this is my room it's, it's not the not the speaker. And then finally, the two Arundel subs. You can see what I'm getting there. Pretty, pretty close tracking to the target curve with those boosts. So I have, this is the config that I'm running right now. Actually, even j this, just this very morning, I did demo this and my parallel Harbottle with, with the same mod target curve modifications applied. Um, I had somebody come uh, from the west side of Michigan to buy my screen finally. So I sold the screen. He picked it up. And we were talking for a while. He knew about the channel, and I gave him some demos. We were kind of playing around with the theater, have, had him listen to both subs, and he has an Anthem processor as well. So we had a good time, a couple hours actually, just sitting down in the room having some fun. And I think this is sounding really, really great. We did the Ready Player One demo, the race scene, of course, at the beginning. Visceral, impactful, clear, detailed, awesome separation from the base layer to the tops. But this is what I'm, this is what I'm doing right now. That's kind of the extent of some of the more advanced capabilities, again, that you can get in Arc Genesis here. Now, there are, there's more coming there. Right now, you have to set all of your speaker distances manually, and you actually don't do that in here, which I think is kind of a miss on their side. You actually do it on the device in the given profile. I'd rather have the distances set, set through here, but we're supposed to be getting like auto distance setting we're supposed to be getting more like phase control or phase integration with the subwoofers. The AVM70 is on the cusp of being released uh, as I record this, and I think with that will come some new software versions and some new features and new capabilities in fairly short order. So I'm excited to see what else they put out. Again, I'm giving two thumbs up to the Anthem products in general and my experience with the AVM70. It hasn't been bug-free, and there are some bugs and some workflow issues and stuff as I've done more complex uh, type of measurement setup and attempted to do that, but the results are impeccable. It sounds excellent in the room. The tools are powerful and you have a lot of capability, again, kind of at your disposal here. So if we look at the curve viewer quick, this is, this is kind of nice as well. I can look at a given, I can look at a given uh, profile, I can look at a given speaker and I can see different elements, so red, Red and purple are almost the same thing. I'm just going to turn off the purple. So red is the measure, and actually you can do show all your measurements in here. You can show the combined measurement without the level adjustment. So that's the actual Focal IWLCR6 response in my room. So again, I'm getting these peaks, and the overall volume level is pretty low, down under 70 dB. So it's taking a good amount of boost. So that's the, the combined measurement with 
the level adjustment being applied, you know, to get it up to that, to that 75 dB spec. There's the center channel speaker. I don't know if maybe if the door being on the left wall has some impact of that left speaker. This one's a little, little taller, a little less squirrely, but the right kind of goes to the, uh, sim very similar to the left. Oh, no wide, sorry. The, so the surrounds, again, the surrounds go a little bit louder. They are still, again, getting trimmed up. Everything in my room is getting trimmed up. And, I, and again, these peaks, a lot of peaks, some big peaks and some big knolls in my space, for sure. The backs aren't quite as bad. Those are much more, much more flat. And then the heights as well. The heights I find are uh, measure just naturally louder. I don't know if that's just because they're firing more, you know, through the totality of the room being up above the seat. And then finally those subwoofers. So here's what the, the front left subwoofer uh, Arundel 1723-2S is doing. Again, peaking in these 30s and then falling down into the 50s and then kind of levelish from there. On the right-hand side, much more of a defined peak and a null in the 30s and then around 50 there and then more, more flat kind of after that. If folks are interested to see, I can load a couple of other speakers really quick. So if I pull up the Harbottle configuration. We're not going to save any changes. We'll let this load. We go to the Curve Viewer. We turn everything off except the unaltered measurement, and we take a look at subwoofer one. So this is my this is my measurement for the Harbottle sub. As I said, peaks and nulls. That's my room. That's not the subwoofers, and they all kind of do the same thing. Um, what I have found though is is using the using arc genesis with the hard bottle has been challenging because the sub just has so much output potential and by its default eq its default configuration it produces signals that are that are too loud that, that arc deems too loud and so arc is says oh the subwoofer signal is too loud reduce it by 3 db so I'm, I'm adjusting uh, like gain gain on the hard bottle and then it's too loud it's too loud i'm down to like minus 15 before it finally passes through an arc measurement. And then the problem is, okay, now arc runs, but the sub is so turned down that you really need to restore some of that and turn it back up. But the sub is turned down, but then arc is boosting it and it's just like push pull. It just seems like a very inefficient way to manage the subwoofer. I wish, I wish arc wouldn't try to hold it so closely to say like, oh, we need the audio signal to be this volume level. I mean, let, let it, let it go what the volume level of the thing is, and then, you know, then EQ it after the fact. Because you can pull that volume down, but forcing me to pull the volume down and then boosting it back up is just like, I don't know, just terribly, terribly inefficient. So the, I, I think there's an element there that I've definitely learned that the Harbottle is an amazing, amazing subwoofer, and it, it might just be too much for, for my room, ultimately. I, my room definitely has its limitations. Let me open up one more because I, I thought this was fun when I did it. I still have it here. This is the measurement curve. When I just had the uh, two Focal Electra 1038 towers in the room. And so this, uh, here, here's there. This is the left tower and the right tower. So the right ones, and this was the case with the subwoofers too. If you, if you go back a little bit and you look at the Arundels, there was bigger sweeps when the subwoofer was on the right-hand side of the room than the left-hand side of the room. And that kind of proves itself uh, here again with these, with these big towers, that the left one is a little more controlled and things on the right side of the room get a little more big in their sweep. I don't know if that's because that right wall is a foundation wall, it's a concrete wall, and the left wall is just a framed structure because there's another room on, the, on that side of it. But, you know, these towers measured, measured pretty flat. They still measured a little lower, you know, honestly, the, the overall average volume here, which it does show in the quick measure. It doesn't show here. It was around 70, a little sub 70, less of, of some of that action than the in walls are showing behind the screen. But again, still some peaks and some knolls around different places. And again, that's my, that's my room at play. So don't take anything that I'm showing in terms of these curves to be you know, viable for how these speakers might perform in your space. It's going to be specific to the environment. It's going to be different, but it's been, it's been fun and almost in some ways a little bit exhausting 
measuring over and over and over again and tweaking, but that's how this stuff goes. It's iterative. I, I know much more about this software today than I did a week ago or two weeks ago or four weeks ago as I've been running it more and more and posing questions to the Arc Genesis discussion thread on AVS and getting some answers and, and some support there. Real cool, real powerful. I'm very, very happy with this device, uh, the results that I'm getting and, and using it and its capabilities. I am completely enamored with the idea and the, the fact of being able to do all of the measurements without being connected to the device at all, meaning the mic plugs into my laptop and I'm network connected to the processor when I need to be. The software is running here and it's really nice to be able to open up a configuration and like use the software completely offline. So take all your measurements, walk away, make some tweaks, you know, maybe make a copy. What, what's something I've done a couple of times is, is take the core file, make a copy of it, do some maybe, not, not off the wall, but you know, make some changes, play with the configuration, experiment with it. And if, then if I, if I trash the settings and I, whatever, I can just throw that file away and I have my, my clean copy with the default curves in the base measurements and stuff that I can work off of again. So it's just so incredibly flexible to be able to do that. And so my goal now is I really want ARC in my living room uh, with some other plans and activities I have going there. And I'm trying to think about and strategize for the best way to do that. So there's a, a more advanced kind of deeper view of, of ARC, Anthem ARC Genesis, and some of the more uh, kind of more detailed technical things that I've been doing with it. Again, if you have ideas, suggestions, things that you do in the software, custom curve elements, house curves that you like, if you find that I'm doing something completely off the wall here, and you might recommend that I shouldn't be doing it that way, sound off in the comments, and let's have a dialogue and, uh, and learn more about this, the features and the software and the capabilities and such together. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Look down in the description below for some ways to support the channel and there'll be plenty more content, comments and so on around this coming up in some dedicated videos as well, of course, in the, the ongoing blogs. And if you have questions, ask them, I'll hit them, hit some answers in the Q&A blog sections as well. Thanks.